Hey everyone, this is Kieran from Eucentric Physio. Today's exercise is about building the neck extensors and the head extensors and progressing them in terms of strength. Uh, you might find that your mobility also improves after this exercise, maybe that ability to bring your chin down to your chest or looking up at the sky. These are the muscles that live on the back here and um, if you've had any whiplashy injuries or concussions or just some neck strains in the past, you might find this exercise quite useful. So if we look at one of our other videos on hands and knees, well, two actually, hands and knees and uh, prone props, so up on our elbows, there's some exercises where we're working on looking up and coming back down or pulling the head away from the ground. Um, and that can have a bit of a combination for the front of the neck and also the back of the neck. But if we wanna really get into the back of the neck, we need to add a little bit of resistance. Now, there is like some end stage stuff that is maybe a little bit more like the BJJ realm or like wrestling or like a high level um, impact sports or even like race car drivers where they need to like work much higher forces. For general population though, just the weight of your head is generally enough, but sometimes a little bit of resistance can just be the difference in you learning to almost dissociate your neck from other areas. Um, and we'll kind of go a little bit into what that means, but it's that idea that uh, you know, if you're trying to say rub your tummy and tap your head at the same time, it's two, doing two things at the same time versus tapping them both at the same time that's doing one thing at that moment. And a lot of the time we'll create um, synergies or people call them compensations, but you know, a lot of the time these are helpful. They're solutions by our body to you know, create or assist us in doing the things we wanna do. And sometimes what we need to do is learn to dissociate those things again and have the skill of both. Can I do this? Or if I want to, can I do this? And having that skill is really important depending on the tasks you do, if they have to do different things at the same time. So what that means that, is, for example, is say I'm reaching forward and my head has a tendency to want to follow my hands, that's okay. But if I also need to be able to pull back like this, I need to have that ability. And we could go into the nuances of which sports that might apply to, but for this particular purpose, just give this a go and see if it's difficult. And if it is, you might find it's useful to uh, just change some of your symptoms. So I'm gonna put it on the back of the head like this. I'm gonna come down onto my elbows. And by pulling down, now I'm creating resistance, right? I have to resist that band, but I'm also gonna push through my elbows. And so I'm pushing myself away from the ground. I'm not letting myself to sink down this way. I'm driving my elbows, so I'm pushing the ground away from me. And at the same time, I'm holding this resistance through the band. And now, if you've, say, done some of that coupling that we talked about, maybe you've you know, decided to, let's say your hamstrings, for example, maybe you found that you know, you've coupled your hamstrings with your neck extensors. And what that means is when you brace with your neck, you also brace with your hamstrings. This can be useful if you're gonna slow down or decelerate. But what happens if the hamstring has to do something separate and go a different direction? So you might wanna just check, is it, easy to move my hamstrings around? If it is, then great. Can I protract and keep this resistance through my head as well and not let my head dip down? Awesome, so you can do two things at once. Or do you find that everything starts to retract and it's a bit too tough? If everything starts to retract and it's a bit too tough, then go back to the exercises where it's just the weight of the head and just build some endurance in those muscles first and then progress into this. To bring a little more complexity to it, you'd then go onto the hands and knees. And that's just because there's less stability points on the ground. So you have to be very good at the points that you are trying to stabilize through. And in this case, it's gonna be the hands and the knees. And the feet aren't really doing too much. So we're in here, I'm still pushing my head, not letting that band come down and I'm not letting my shoulders sink like this. I'm just pushing the ground away from me and holding, holding, holding. There, I can still breathe so I can coordinate that. I can do multiple things at once if I wanted to. You know, I can move my back around. I'm maintaining all those other things. I'm protracting, keeping the cervical extension, breathing, I'm moving my neck, 
my back. And so all those movements are me layering complexity of things together. If you find that you haven't got that freedom of movement, then what you've, what's probably happened is you've coupled um, a lot of those cervical extensors and head extensors with other parts of your body. And so when they're tensed, these other muscles are also tense, trying to assist the movement. The trouble is, is the trade-off is rigidity or loss of movement. So the, the solution to that is to do this and practice moving around, whatever feels tricky, and then you'll find, ah, actually, my head is a little bit more free to move and maybe some other body parts as well, and you'll build some more neck endurance. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.